Good morning. It's an amazing morning to be alive. Look around what, right where you are. Stop and consider all of the gifts that God has given to you on this day. As we uh, send this video online, uh, I'm probably right now at the Orchard Hill All Church Picnic sharing this very same message. And we wanted to be sure those of you at home could uh, hear the same message that we're receiving today at our picnic. So what are these gifts that God has filled your life with? Well, one, you're alive and breathing. And some of you are even young. Young, alive, and breathing. I'll let you determine whether you put yourself in that young category or not. And some of you are older and wiser, and that's a gift. Um, some of you are healthy enough to go for a walk, play soccer, play pickleball, play football. Another gift is um, the device that you're watching this on. You know, it's amazing. You have a TV or a computer or uh, earbuds, whatever it is you're watching or listening. Another gift God's put into your life is friends, family, teammates, work partners, neighbors. Another gift is God loves you in spite of the fact that you know you're broken. You know often you disappoint him, but God loves you. He loves you deeply. Another gift that you have today is the very senses that he's given you. Taste, smell, sight. And you can take a walk in nature. Today is filled with good gifts from God that point to him. Psalm 118, 20 and 22 is the verse I want to bring this morning. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's Jesus. The builders of the church rejected him, but he became the cornerstone. The Lord has done this. God has done this. And it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Rejoice means choose joy. The Lord has given us these gifts. Let us choose joy today and be glad. Let me paraphrase this verse for you in the Dave Bartlett paraphrase. This is the day that the Lord our God has given us as a gift to you and me. Let us choose joy and be glad for this gift. Today, if you're thinking about August 28th, is the 240th day of the year 2022 with 135 days left. And today is the, is the uh, 35th Sunday of this year. This day is a gift given by God. It's never been given before in all of world history. It's never been given before. And once it's used up, once it's gone tonight, the day is gone. And it, you'll never have the opportunity to enjoy the gift of this day again. It's a one-time God-given gift. And you and I are called to choose joy as we enjoy this gift of God. Last week in church, Jeff Minky cast a vision for our congregation and our lives this fall. He said very well, very clearly, very compellingly to my heart, and I want to remind you and affirm of what Jeff said. He said this, here's our vision for fall. He said, as followers of Jesus, we need to live our lives to shine as a really good movie trailer so that those without faith could see God in us and be drawn towards him. God calls us to live out the law of Christ, which is so simple. One law replacing all the other laws. This is what Jesus said. To love God and to love other people as Jesus loved us. That's the law. Love God back, because he first loved us, and love other people sacrificially. Love God and love others. And then that helps us shine like a movie trailer for our family, our neighbors, our co-workers, our classmates, for people who don't yet know Christ. Next Sunday, on Vision Week number three, Brian's going to call us to love God and love others, but he's going to communicate how important it is that we do that out of overflow. We, we can shine in the movie, in the movie trailer because God fills us with his love. He fills us with his promises. He fills us with his gifts. And then we just overflow on him. And today, my message is really simple at the picnic. Let's 
do it with joy. I put the three weeks of vision on a slide here. Let's take a look at this. This is what I think we're trying to say this fall at Orchard Hill Church, that we want to choose in our lives to love God and love others sacrificially every day, doing it with joy, empowered by God's overflowing love and blessing so that others may know Christ. I feel like that's such an important vision. Love God, love others sacrificially every day, doing it with joy. Empowered by God's overflowing love and blessing so that others may know Christ. The idea of rejoicing as we receive God's gifts daily, that idea is a theme of King David's in the Psalms, which I've already showed you. It's also a theme of Jesus, and it's a theme of Paul's. Here's, here's Jesus. Here's the words of Jesus. He's sharing with his disciples, and he's saying this, I have told you these things, so that in me, Jesus is speaking, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. So every day comes with its own set of troubles, but take heart. And in many translations, that but take heart is, is translated rejoice, choose joy. For what? I have overcome the world. I'm talking about how this choosing joy, rejoicing, is a, such a theme of the, of the New Testament. Here's the Apostle Paul. And he says in Philippians, rejoice, choose joy in the Lord always. I say it again, choose joy, rejoice. And then we have one more verse where Paul's talking about this. And he says, rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now here's the question. How and why can you and I love God back, and love others, be this shining movie trailer, how can we do it? Uh, how can we choose joy as we're doing it? And it's interesting, all three of the scriptures where I chose talk about we can do it in Jesus. Uh, King David said before, he said, rejoice every single day. He said, this is based on the stone the builders rejected which has become the cornerstone, Jesus. And Paul says it um, this way earlier in the chapter where uh, he says, uh, rejoice always, for God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we're awake or asleep, we may live together with him. And Jesus said, how can you live this way? He simply said, very simply, for I have overcome the world. Jesus also said in his verse, how will the world know that I am the Christ, except ye love one another? How's the world going to know, except ye love one another? I want us to think about, Jeff, Jeff had us thinking movie trailers. I want us to think about the story that we tell ourselves over and over and over again. Um, what's the story you tell yourself about your faith? What's the story you tell yourself about your life? What's the story you tell yourself about our church this fall? What are the words that you hear in your mind? You know, this is important because um, some of you need to tweak and adjust the words you use in your own storytelling in your mind. The voice that has the most authority in your whole life is your own voice. The voice you listen to the most is your own voice. Uh, telling yourself a story. And these stories you tell yourself are so different. I remember sitting in my office and having people tell me stories about our church. And in my head, I was going... I think we attend different churches because the story I had about the church and the story they had about the church were so different. So what are the stories and how are you telling yourself the stories um, that are having an impact on you? And I just want to say some of you have already told your story since I've come up here and started teaching and I know what some of you are saying to yourselves in your head. Somebody sitting there at, the, at our picnic, is saying, this marriage Dave is giving is for somebody else. 
That's what they're saying in their head. I'm not the kind of person that chooses joy. Some of you are saying that right now. Some of you are saying, Dave's always a little too positive. I wish he'd get more real. And you're whispering to yourself, I live in the real world. Some of you are telling yourself the story, well, if Dave really knew what I'm facing right now, or the kind of life I've had, he would know that choosing an option, choosing joy isn't an option. Some of you are whispering in your mind, the story you're telling is, Dave, thanks, I needed this reminder. What's in your head? What story are you telling yourself? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was at the leadership summit here at our church, and I'm still inspired by the summit. And my favorite takeaway from that summit was uh, from a speaker, J uh, John Acuff, and he said, you need to check out the stories you're telling yourself. And he said this, three questions you should be asking. And I've actually asked myself this question about the stories I tell myself every day since I heard this. Here's the three questions. We have it on the slide. Is the story I'm telling true? Is it true? Is the story I'm telling myself helpful? And is it kind? Now, here's the interesting thing. There's a, a million true stories, but some of them that I tell myself will not be helpful to me being the kind of person I want to be, the kind of follower of Jesus I want to be. So I need to quit telling myself stories that are not true. I need to quit telling myself stories that are not helpful. And I need to stop telling myself stories that are not kind. And you can do it. John Acuff called this having a growth mindset, a mindset that allows you to change and grow. And isn't that what we're trying to do? We're trying to become more and more like Jesus. We're trying to follow him better and better. And in order to do that, I need to be having the right words I'm speaking to myself. We can all adjust and tweak our stories. And I know there are hard days. I <laughs> Believe me, I know there are hard days. Three weeks ago on a Monday evening at 11 p.m., I got a call that woke me up. It was my brother Mike. Mike told me that his oldest grandson, 18-year-old Mason, was killed in a traffic, tragic traffic accident a few minutes before he had called me. Devastating grief and loss. Brother Mike and Mason's parents, Joyce and Freddie, were in shock. Grandpa and grandma, mom, dad, his brother, his sister, the whole family sitting there in the house in total shock. The pain was extreme. Their hearts had been ripped out. Mason was one of those kids who loved people. He made people laugh. He was a football team leader at his high school. And he was headed to his first year of college football at Minnesota State. He was a big, young man who loved his brother, loved his little sister, loved his grandparents, his aunts and uncles. He was funny, serious, sensitive, smart, welcoming. Did I say funny? He was one of those kids who was the life of the party, and he made everybody feel welcome. So Mason's family walked through that week of excruciating pain. Pain. Pain, like one dad said, it's like your, your heart's being ripped out. But right in the pain, they tried to find some joy. They told stories about Mason that made him laugh. They found pictures that brought back memories. And it, on the evening following the funeral, they gathered for a gathering. Maybe you would call it a party. And they sang crazy karaoke songs. Because that's what Mason loved to do. So his grandpa, my brother, stood up for the first time publicly and sang a karaoke song. I'm sure there were tears and laughter. And what were they doing? They were choosing joy as best they could in that terrible, excruciating pain. As we choose joy, even on our worst days, 
we get to do it in a way that makes sense to us. And why can we do it? How can we live this way? How can we tell ourselves these kinds of stories? How can we be this movie trailer? How, how do we do it? Well, we have to have true and helpful and kind stories in our head. And uh, when I attended Mason's funeral, the pastor right in the funeral brought back, this was a couple weeks ago, brought back a symbol that we've actually used before as a church. Doug used it at our gathering a few years ago. And the symbol is a rope, a long rope. A rope like this one. A rope, uh, this is 100 foot. And uh, let's just pretend that I've stretched 100 feet out. But uh, actually, God's rope is a lot longer than 100 feet. Maybe you think about the the Unidome, or, or Dyke, or Ames, or the Rocky Mountains. How about the rope that keeps going over the, and down the other side and to the coast in California? Eternity. Eternity. That's one of the stories that the Bible says is true for us, that we live that long. But here's, here's our life on earth. It's signified by this yellow tape here on the end. And whether you live... 18 years, or 40 years, or 100 years, it's this long. And we've got eternity to be with God. And what is that eternity? Now again, what story are you telling yourself? It's a thrilling, exciting, peace-filled time with God and with those we love. That's heaven. That's like as far as you can think. And this is our life here. How do we choose joy here? Paul says, what we experience here is light and momentary trouble. How is it light and momentary? Well, it, it, it feels like our hearts have been ripped out. It feels like we've had so many disappointments. But the story we tell ourselves is this isn't all there is. Not just this. We've got all of this, so powerful, so important. This story is true. It's helpful to us and it's kind. So let's remember uh, that we get to choose our vision. We get to choose how we're going to be in the tr movie trailer. We get to choose the story we're going to tell ourselves. And according to the scriptures and to Jesus, this is a true story that's helpful. Thank you so much for thinking with us about these true stories. So let me say a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God in heaven, thank you so much for true stories. True stories that are helpful, true stories that are kind. Thank you so much for who Jesus was, who lived this way. Help us, help us uh, live this way so that those who don't know you could get a picture of who you are. In Jesus' name, amen.